Awesome. So here's the deal, you guys. On this section, we're going to be taking a look at the specific details of the different fingerprint patterns. Um, and so we're going to look very, very specifically at those ridges. So pay attention in your um, note packet as we're going through this stuff and watch out for these key details that help us distinguish and identify fingerprints. So as I mentioned in the previous video, the delta is an area that can be used um, to determine if the print is going to be a loop, a whirl, or an arch. Now, it looks kind of like a river delta, and that's why it was named that way. Here's what you need to know. Loops only have one delta. Whirls have two deltas, and arches have no deltas. Now, if we were to go back and look up at our diagram up here, when I look at the whirl, okay, here is a delta, and here is a delta. It's an area where the ridges actually converge and create kind of a triangular shape. Now, on the loop, where would you identify the delta? Hopefully you indicated right here, opposite of where the loop forms, okay? So, we're going to continue on, and here's another thing that um, forensic examiners are going to look for. They're going to look for the presence of the core. It's the center of a whirl or a loop. Um, the deltas are usually near the loop, um, but the core itself enables them to perform another type of quantitative analysis called a ridge count. The ridge count is another characteristic that distinguishes one fingerprint from another. So basically you start at the center of the core and you count the number of ridges until you reach the delta. And so that's going to be fairly unique from person to person. When we look at loops, there can be two different types of loops. There's what's called a radial loop or an ulnar loop. Now if you take your hand and look at your hand right now, where your thumb attaches to your forearm, that bone right there in your forearm is called the radius. Your pinky attaches to the ulnar side of your hand, okay, or of your forearm. And so that's your ulnus, or, yeah. Anyways, um, my words are eluding me today, sorry. So when we're looking at the loop, you want to look at does the bottom of the loop point out towards the thumb side of the hand, or does it point out towards the pinky side of the hand? Now what's tricky is which way is the hand facing? And could it be flip-flopped? Because when you leave an impression, are you looking at the exact image or a mirror image? I want you to think about that because that's going to be one of the issues that comes up when we start to do our fingerprinting lab techniques. Now, whirls um, can be what's called a plain whirl, like a spiral, and that's the one that is depicted right over here. And then there's what's called the double loop. Um, and if this is not in your packet, you need to add this one in. Now, the double loop reminds me of myself. Haha. <laughs> Don't ask why. Well, actually, I'll explain it to you anyways, even if you don't want to know. My first name is Shelly, and so to me, a double loop looks just like an S. Okay? So add that one to, the, to, to your packet if it's not there already. It's basically where two loops, one here and one here, um, kind of run up next to each other and create um, an interesting pattern. So there's also what's called a central pocket loop. So it looks just like a loop where the ridges continue in an arching pattern, wrap down and around itself. But at the very, very center, there's an area um, where there's almost like concentric circles right in the middle. Okay, the ridges actually fold in on themselves. Then there's what's called an accidental whirl. So when we look at the accidental whirl, check out the ridge patterns here. If you try and follow the ridges around, you get very confused about where are they actually going because it kind of looks, looks like it could be the central pocket loop because right in the very, very center right there, we can see that there's 
some concentric circles, but can you actually identify where there is a loop? Hmm, difficult to do. So that one's called an accidental whirl. All right, um, the next type of the fingerprint patterns that we talked about was the arches. And so there's what's called a plain arch and a tented arch. Now, when you think of a tent, Hopefully you think of the fact that there's those tent poles that hold it up. So I want you to think of those traditional style tents. Um, and there's typically, or originally, there was a main center pole. So the tented arch, and I know I'm doing these out of order, but the tented arch, the arch goes up, but you can see an area right in the center where there are ridges that extend up but don't come back down. So do you see coming from the right hand side right here, it goes up and then stops. So that's the tented arch. The regular plain arch just looks like a nice little mound or a hill, and it goes all the ridges go all the way across the print, nice and neat. So remember that the uniqueness of those fingerprint patterns are due to the way those ridges are formed. Remember they're randomly grown while in the womb, and some qualities are inherited. For example, whether you have whorls or loops is dependent on whether your parents had whorls or loops. But how those whorls or loops actually form are very, very specific. Your ridge count from the core out to your deltas is probably different. Um, it might be interesting to take a look at your parents and see, hmm, which fingerprints do I have that are the same? And how are they different? So remember that friction and pressure in the womb are what actually cause that final outcome. So your experience in the womb was very different from your parents and even that of your siblings. This is also another one of the reasons why even identical twins do not have the same fingerprints. Because in the womb, the friction and pressure that it's, that's exerted on their fingers, palms, feet, and toes is different. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.